There are fears ISIS is spreading even more in Asia. Indonesia, Malaysia and the Philippines are joining forces to fight militants who have laid siege to a southern Philippine city. Since May, more than 200,000 residents of Marawi have had to leave their homes as fighting between troops and ISIS continues. Officials say 26 civilians have been killed in three weeks. Members of Congress, including Republican Senator Joni Ernst of Iowa, are expressing concern. And joining us now is Travis Tritton. He's the national defense, national security reporter for the Washington Examiner. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. So, Travis, the U.S. is about, what, 50 to 100 special forces working in this advise and assist role in the Philippines. What should it be? Is that enough? Well, it's very interesting because the U.S. had uh, about five or 600 uh, special operators there after 9-11, and we kept them there for over a decade. Um, but several years ago, we pulled them out of the Philippines and ended the mission there, and we just left this very small contingent force. And now what we're seeing is uh, really an increase in the violence there. So I think that that is all under question right now. Well, it, it, we can only put our troops in so many different places. We have a leader there, a new leader, Duterte, uh, the president, and I think that uh, he has had some tough rhetoric, too, as well, for, for all of these folks. What I'm interested in, though, is the role of, of the Catholics and the persecution there. Uh, Eighty-five percent of the Philippines is Catholic, and the Muslims uh, are helping Christians escape by wearing, allowing them to wear hijabs. How prevalent was that in, when you were reporting there, and, and how important is this? Yeah, the Philippines is definitely a Catholic country, but uh, they have their concentration of uh, Muslims in the southern part of the country. And we are seeing reports, some pretty harrowing reports from Marawi uh, about um, Christians, Catholics being targeted by these rebels, going house to house, door to door, asking people to recite the Quran, and possibly executing those who can't do that. He's declared martial law across the southern region to control the, the terror. Is that working? Well, I think uh, we've yet to see whether that's going to work, whether that's an effective strategy there. Um, the Philippines have been trying to deal with this insurgency for a long time, and they've really struggled with it. And uh, now we're seeing it really coming back and surging. Um, so it's going to take some measures, some new measures, to get it under control. Experts say the government is partly to blame for the rise of terror. Is that true, based on your reporting? Well, again, the Philippines have struggled for generations with this uh, Muslim separatist movement. And again, I think that uh, what we're seeing now is the influence of the Islamic State. Uh, I think it's inspiring these groups to come together, to band together. It's emboldened them. Um, and we've seen this attack on morale, which really is one of the largest attacks in recent memory. Travis Tritton, defense and national security reporter for The Washington Examiner, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.